one of the key um, decisions, and on probably one of the more long-lasting ones, actually, that the former Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern made um, during her tenure as Prime Minister was to um, make history a compulsory part of the New Zealand educational curriculum. Um, and she directed the Ministry of Education to look at um, uh, ensuring that history, um, the history of New Zealand, and there's the issue, the history of New Zealand, um, was going to be given the same status as the other compulsory subjects at NCA, certainly Level 1, which is what, Maths, English and Science. I think you can opt out of those, but as a general rule, most, um, most as I understand it, schools in actual fact make it a compulsory part of their curriculum at that level. Um, but the other, um, so um, that that's fine. So I, I think most New Zealanders could accept that that's not a bad thing to learn about the history and the heritage of the country in which you live and the culture in which uh, you are being brought up. But uh, Professor Rata and other academics uh, have pointed out um, that the nature of what you teach is probably important, more important than what you teach. Um, uh, what his constitutes history, the way in which it is interpreted, um, the way in which it will be taught, um, can easily be used for polemic purposes uh, rather from the purposes of instruction um, and of education. And she joins us this morning to talk on exactly that issue. Professor Rata, good morning to you. Oh, good morning, Michael. Um, in your letter to Chris Hipkins, um, you say that the first problem is a fundamental change to the purpose of New Zealand education uh, contained in this curriculum refresh um, that the Ministry of Education are in control of. And then you say that the second problem is an effect of the first. It's the insertion into the curriculum of traditional knowledge or matauranga Māori as equivalent to science. Um, can you take us through what the Ministry of Education are proposing to do? Right. Well, I do want to talk more about the, the so-called refresh curriculum rather than the um, history one in particular, Michael, if that's okay, because the history curriculum life. is part of this larger um, refreshed curriculum, it's called. Um, the curriculum development goes back to the late 90s and by um, it sort of changed, has changed our curriculum in a fundamental way and I hoped that with this new attempt of the last couple of years which is called the refresh curriculum that things would improve, that we would see you know, real knowledge in the curriculum. Sadly, um, the refresh curriculum document um, called um, Te Mataiho is far worse than I could ever have thought possible. It's actually not about knowledge at all. It's about um, identity. It's about um, creating uh, young people into um, the so-called racialized these racialized identities as you know you identify with your heritage group you know and the two main ones are maori and non-maori and that's how students are seen so if you want to look in the, this document this refresh curriculum just say in the english part then you want to look for things like you know, grammar and vocabulary and language convention, spelling, punctuation, all the sort of things that we think, yes, you know, should be in English. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. Mm. But worse um, and that's your thing. is that... No, 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 go on. No, but I'm also interested in... Um, I, I understand what you're saying, but you're also suggesting that... Um, this race culture link that you talk about um, and the concept of dividing students into Maori and non Maori and, um, and the cultures that they bring with them. Um, you make a specific mention of bringing it into the science area uh, and you say, there's an example you give that the NCA Chemistry and Biology uh, introduces the idea of Maori, M-A-U-R-I, as a relevant concept in biology and chemistry. And then, can I read what you say? It defines Māori as, quote-unquote, the vital essence, 
the life force of everything, be it a physical object, living thing, or ecosystem. In chemistry and biology, Mori refers to the health and life-sustaining capacity of the Tao on biological, physical, and chemical levels. Um, so you're essentially suggesting it's bringing in some sort of spiritual, Maori spiritual dimension to the teaching of Western science. Is that correct? Well, it's not Western science, Michael. It's, um, oh, just science, sorry. Science, yeah, okay. science that, yeah, yeah, fair And enough, that's yeah. really important, actually. International because science. As soon as you say Western science, you're sort of saying that science is somehow belonging to a particular cultural group. But no, more no than fair science enough. Is um, yes, that's the problem that, um, you know, the um, modern science and modern um, disciplinary subjects, academic subjects, they, um, they're based on the idea of secularism, the idea that um, human beings, we can seek to understand our world um, without, um, uh, a, you know, a spirit force guiding us, that it's us as humans seeking to try to know ourselves in the world. But as soon as you bring in a spiritual dimension, um, you are completely undermining that idea that we can know the world ourselves. Um, and it becomes a pre-modern um, idea of hope, attempting to, knowing is attempting to understand God or the God's purpose in the world, to see the spirit. Um, and of course, you know, people can believe, have any religious beliefs they want, absolutely fine. But the purpose of schools is not to um, inculcate uh, religious beliefs into, and spiritual beliefs into our children. It's to teach the um, academic subjects that you know, you can't get it home. Um, I and mean, one of the things that immediately struck me from the, what you're saying is that if you're going to teach Māori, the vital essence, the life force of everything in science, you may as well teach Christian creationism. Yeah? Well, that's right. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's, in fact, um, what it is here. Um, so this is, this is, if you like, Maori creationism, some sort of supernatural deity or some, some su supernatural force, uh, which they argue has a legitimacy uh, in, a, in a modern science context. Yes, and of course it's looking for the causes and properties and processes of the natural world. It's looking for a, um, a divine um, cause for those properties and processes where, where science is about um, looking for um, physical, I mean think of what physics is, it's about looking for, um, for physical causes, for natural causes of um, both natural and social phenomena. So it, it would involve um, turning our secular schools into um, well, religious schools, really. Mm, mm. Um, you also draw attention to the effect on the curriculum um, caused by the false claim, you say, that traditional knowledge and modern science are equivalent. Um, and you say this is damaging, not only to science education within New Zealand, but to our nation's international reputation. Um, and I've noticed that uh, not just uh, permeating through the education curriculum, but also in my elected role as local government as well, this concept that Matauranga Māori um, has an equivalence um, with empirical um, observation and understanding. Um, do you know where it emanated from, this concept, within the ministry? Yes, yes. Um, it's a good question, actually. In order to understand what's happened, we really have to look at um, what's been going on in the ministry. I, I would describe it as an ideological fortress. I attempted to send a letter to senior officials in the ministry and found it impossible to get their email addresses. I rang the ministry 0800 number, um, left a message, didn't hear anything back. Um, you know, who are these people? What are they doing? Why are they telling school leaders? And here's a quote from the um, refreshed curriculum document that school leaders, this is one of their, their actions, 
Um, they are to lead in kayako, uh, to incorporate te reo Māori and mātauranga Māori in the co-design of localised curriculum with whānau, hapu and iwi. Now, there's an awful lot going on there. Suddenly, the idea of schools being places where you're taught academic subjects that have been developed in the disciplines, um, that has been completely overturned. And we've now got this idea that um, cultural knowledge developed in local communities, which is not accountable to to any um, you know methods and procedures that um, academic subject disciplines are accountable to, suddenly this is going to become our curriculum. Now, um, a lot of people a, don't. No, I understand what you're saying. Professor, a lot of things that people don't understand, though, that the curriculum that I had assumed, and I only learnt this last week, you see, just to explain, I I have uh, one child that's just completed year 13 at school, I have another at year 12, and I have another at year 9. And I'd always assumed that the curriculum that they learn to whichever school they go to, and um, my girl goes to one school and my boy goes to another, um, it would be the same. I didn't realise that schools have a measure of independence in how they interpret the curriculum, and and they do, yes? Well, there's a real contradiction going on here. The idea is that, yes, yes, school is, is called the localised curriculum, that a school decides what their curriculum will be. But then here we have the ministry saying you have to include te reo Māori and mātauranga Māori within all subjects, not only science. So on one hand, yes, you can decide what you will teach and on the other that this is what you have to do. Um, so there's a lot of ambiguity and contradictions going on but the real problem is that in some schools children will not be taught academic subjects. I mean there are some schools of course that, that are absolutely committed to teaching their children well but other schools are becoming quite lost in this absolute confusion about what on earth is our curriculum. Yes and you've also just mentioned and you've given that quote about co-designing the curriculum so the suggestion that school leaders sit down um, you've used the direct quote with Fano, Hapu and Iwi to co-design the curriculum that's going to be taught in that school. Now, in many cases, none of them are educators um, or, edu or have a particularly professional or educative background. Um, they're not trained for that. They are leaders of their own Maori communities. Um, doesn't that suggest also that we are likely to have academic excellence undermined by, in many cases, superstitious, supernatural um, or spiritual beliefs? Well, an academic subject needs to be designed by a specialist in that actual discipline. You know, someone who oh, has so studied too. the discipline and then yeah. can work with teachers to you know, um, turn it into an academic subject. What I might do is use the example of history as, um, to, to so, uh, discuss what will happen. So if you think about history, there are two types of history. There's history that's collective memory. That's sort of the history that we want to remember because it makes us look good. And then there's the hist history that is an objective account as far as we know and we can find out of what went on in the past, you know, who was there, what they did, what they said, um, using as much evidence as we're able to find and using mm. methods that require us to say where we get our material from, who's, you know, um, how reliable is it? And that um, knowledge needs to be independently verifiable. But when it's a matter of our collective memory, it, it's, it's what we want to understand. I use Anzac Day as an example. Anzac Day is very much um, about our collective memory. It's how we want to see ourselves. Um, we, we don't talk about the fact that um, New Zealanders went to the other side of the world as part of a force that invaded another country. We don't talk about that because that's not what Anzac Day is to me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. if it was that the whole um, business of what happened at Gallipoli is taught um, in an objective manner, 
then it would be um, taught very, very differently. It would be about what actually did happen and all the evidence um, required to, to um, substantiate what is being taught. So they're quite, two quite different types of knowledge. Both, both needed, the first one's needed for us to see ourselves as, as a nation, as a, as a society, um, gives us a sense that um, you know, we, we have something in common. It's known as collective representations in, in um, sociology. And then, but the other one is why we go to school. It's to get that knowledge that has to be substantiated, that has to be independently verifiable. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, um, it's, no, but I mean, the thing that's really interesting to me is you're talking about essentially a constitutional revolution, which of course this is, but it's one in which none of us have actually ever participated in terms of discussion or debate. It's just been imposed upon our children um, through the curriculum. Um, and uh, you've described the Ministry of Education as, as an ideological fortress in our interview this morning. Um, apart from what you're doing, which is writing to the Prime Minister and also appearing on shows like The Platform, for example. Um, what real opportunity do people have to say no to this? I mean, I assume this curriculum's coming in next year, right? Is that right? Um, uh, well, in this year, um, uh, principal, school principals are required to develop um, strategies to implement it. And right. it is intended to be fully implemented by 2026. Um, 2026. Apparently, right. there have been, yeah, there have been um, specialist groups consultate that have consulted, you know, the idea consulted widely. Um, but, but no, it's been... Um, a tightly controlled process to ensure that, and I'll, I'll tell you what the purpose of this curriculum, it states it quite clearly. It says that um, the curriculum, the refresh curriculum, the Mataiho, will help foster the next generation of Te Tiriti partners by moving beyond the rhetorical notion of honouring Te Tiriti to giving effect to it. So that's actually the purpose of the refreshed curriculum. It is Sorry, just explain. It's just, could you just, yes. Professor Rada, could you just repeat that, please? From honouring Te right, Tiriti yes. to, yes, to what was the next word you used? the treaty to giving yeah. effect to it. Ah, okay. Um, Thank now, you. This, this, it, this is saying that something that's highly contested, such as, you know, the, the place of the treaty in our... Um, political system and in our society, which is hotly debated, and rightly so, this document is saying, no, there is one way to understand the treaty. It's our way, and all schools are going to have to teach this way, this ideology. Mm. So uh, uh, can I just say... Um, you know, yeah, it's it, it is it is the revolution that a um, uh, revolution by stealth I might add, and I'm so glad that you've brought it to our attention. Um, you personally, though, um, are fi are you're frozen out. You you feel by the Ministry of Education from uttering um, these quite well-founded concerns. Um, I take it that you will be talking to other politicians and political part about these concerns over the next few weeks and months. Yes, I've realised over the last few years that it is um, not possible to talk to people in the Ministry of Education because, you know, they are ideologues. There is a determination to use the education system for this political ideology. So there's no point. I mean, I have tried, obviously. Um, so last time um, we spoke, I talked about, you know, parents going to their schools and insisting that their school the children be taught, you know, academic subjects, be taught not just conceived as learners, but actually taught something and for parents to ask, what are you teaching my child? Not what is my child learning, what are you teaching my child? I need to know it. 
Um, but now I would go a step further and I would advise people listening to this program to get in touch with their local MP, to get in touch with um, the new Minister of Education and also with Chris Hipkins because all of this happened on his watch as Minister of Education and say, what is going on? We have called in the, this open letter to Chris Hipkins for him to stop the curriculum um, review, to just uh, refresh, to just stop it. It is, um, it cannot be saved. All right. Okay. Professor, thank you so much for drawing this to our attention. I'm sure we'll talk more with you on this in the future um, and on the concerns that you raise. I thank you for the time that you've taken to talk to us this morning. Thanks, Michael. Um, that is Professor uh, Elizabeth um, Rata, from, who is the uh, Professor of Education at Auckland University. I've had her on my show before, on, um, from 10 to, to 1. And um, I, I have to say, at considerable academic risk does she um, break the mould uh, in terms of entering the fray on this. But um, you always need whistleblowers. And in many ways, Professor Rata is a whistleblower as to what is happening within the deepest, darkest recesses of the education bureaucracy as we talk.